Travel consideration provided by... There's nothing like hitting the waves. There's nothing like volunteering. But my moderate to severe eczema can make it hard. Now, I'm staying ahead of it. Dupixit helps heal your skin from within, so you can have clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixit. You're really in the trenches, and you really don't know what is going to happen. Monday, we're in Hollywood for Christina Applegate's big honor and her Married with Children reunion. All right, before we go, Lindsay Lohan's Falling for Christmas is on Netflix now. But on The Tonight Show last night... Happening now. The cold front swept through and temperatures are still tumbling. Winds are howling as well. I'll be back to let you know when the wind will subside, how cold it's going to get, and where we could have a light freeze. As calls for his resignation mount, what is next in the saga of District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry? We're live from Comalander Stadium for the big game and our big game covers tonight. Number six, Reagan, playing host to number 10, New Braunfels, to see who advances to the second round of the big game coverage playoffs and why both teams will be without their starting quarterbacks. The News and Five starts right now. Yes, Greg Simmons wearing the full coat. The weather's a whole lot different than it was this morning and even this afternoon. Yeah, if you're going to be out this evening like Greg later tonight, an umbrella and a coat may be in high demand. Adam Kasky counts it all down for us. Adam. Yeah, and right now you still need the umbrella. We have a few light showers across our area, but the coat is going to be more important and that's going to take precedence uh, later on this evening. You look at the radar and a lot of the activity has really fizzled out. Not much in terms of showers and thunderstorms left over in and around San Antonio. We still have a few pockets of light to moderate rain. The yellow indicating some of the moderate showers. We've got one that's moving towards Chavano Park at this time and even just south of Chavano Park. You can see this. Uh, this is along Northwest Military near Churchill High School. Uh, get down into the neighborhood and it's headed toward Blanco Road and this is on the north side of town. Just a few of these little splotchy showers here and there. Not a whole lot of them and I do anticipate just some of this activity to come and go really over the next couple of hours and that's about it. You can see not much else. This is all behind the cold front that moved through earlier this afternoon. It hit the airport at about at about the at about one o'clock. Basically, look at some of the temperatures. 50s, Lakey 57, Shirts at 55, Bulverde 51, Lavernia 60, but that's going to be dropping quickly. Seguin at 57, not only cooler, but gusty. Wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Temperatures will be down in the 40s before you know it this evening after sunset. We're going to talk about how cold it's going to get and where overnight tonight and where we could even see a light freeze in the days ahead. Coming up, Steve. Minutes. Thank you, Adam. Well, for the second time in less than a week, San Antonio City Council likely to pass a vote of no confidence against one of its members. First, Councilman Mario Bravo. Now, Councilman Clayton Perry. The District 10 Councilman was formally charged yesterday with just a misdemeanor thus far in connection to a hit and run crash on Sunday, not too far from his home during a special meeting that is now scheduled for Monday afternoon. Council will now take up a vote of no confidence and call on Perry to resign. And with Perry's political future very much in doubt, one expert telling our Dylan Collier it's time for him to step down, saying the Councilman can no longer be an effective leader. Thursday was not a good day for Councilman Clayton Perry, forced to turn himself in on a misdemeanor warrant for failing to stop and provide information. Perry was barely out of custody when San Antonio police dropped two hammers on him. Do you need an ambulance? First, more than 13 minutes of body-worn camera footage showing Perry in rough shape, out of it and bleeding in his own backyard. Second, SAPD confirmed it would be filing a DWI case against him with the Bear County District Attorney's Office. A source telling KSAT today, DA Joe Gonzalez will file to recuse himself from those criminal matters against Perry as soon as early next week. Were you driving earlier? No. If you were advising him, if you were part of his office, would you advise him to resign or to try and stick it out? I'd advise him to resign. I mean, he's he's damaged goods. John Taylor is a political science professor at UTSA. Perception is everything in politics. Let's be blunt here. 
And this is this is a perception issue. The speed of events in this case has been incredible. Less than five days ago, Councilman Clayton Perry turned into the wrong lanes of this intersection near his home, crashing into another car head on. A councilman's worst moments caught on camera for all to see. It does not look good when it's on video. That especially makes it pretty damning. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. First at five, a murder suspect on the loose, and San Antonio police want your help to put him behind bars. Take a look at 23-year-old Abel Gallegos. Police say that he got into an argument with a group of people at a convenience store last December. It happened on Cincinnati Avenue near North Calaveras on the west side. Detectives say that when Gallegos pulled out a gun, Everyone scattered, jumping into vehicles and speeding off. They say Gallego started shooting randomly at the vehicles and ended up hitting a man in the head. That man later died at the hospital. Now Gallegos is considered a fugitive. If you know where he is, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. San Antonio police say an SUV slammed into the back of a Mustang early this morning, killing the driver of that SUV. It happened about 5 a.m. in the Southwest Loop 410 near Palo Alto Road area. Officers say, according to witnesses, the driver of the SUV hit the Mustang from behind that impact, causing the SUV to roll over, landing on its side. When police got to the scene, they say the 22 year old driver of the SUV on the ground, he was pronounced dead. It is not clear if the other driver involved was hurt. The crash is still under investigation. The recent blue wave at the Bear County Courthouse somehow missed the new Precinct 3 County Commissioner's seat. After Trish DeBerry stepped down, a fellow Republican won the special election on Tuesday night and now will fill her unexpired term. Jesse DeGoyado introduces us to Grant Moody, who is making his Bear County political debut now. This was the first race for the Valero executive, a former Marine and a legislative aide in Washington, D.C. It's a unique opportunity and, and we're going to work hard for Bear County. Having lost her bid for Bear County judge, Trish DeBerry had two years left as Precinct 3 County Commissioner. Grant Moody won a special election to finish up her unexpired term. I haven't gotten into some more details on kind of her experience there or what she'd recommend, but definitely look forward to catching up with her here in the coming weeks. As well as Mary Lynn Barnard, the interim Precinct 3 Commissioner who will be stepping aside. You know, she's being very gracious about the transition process and I thank her for that. As the sole Republican, Moody says he wants to get to know the new Bear County judge and the rest of his colleagues on the Commissioner's Court. Their challenges, their desires in county government and you know, see where there's um, areas for, for compromise. Public safety is Moody's top priority, he says. Money for more deputies at the sheriff's office and staffing at the Bear County Jail. I'm in discussions with Valera now about what that transition looks like and when I will need to focus full time on uh, serving Bear County. Moody also hopes to hang on to his new job longer than two years. I absolutely plan to run for re-election in 2024. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. He is missed. Happening this weekend, family and friends gathering for a memorial service for longtime radio personality Russell Rush. Rush was a radio host for 96.1 Now, a good friend of KSAT as well. He passed away last month after a long battle with T-cell lymphoma. On Sunday, there will be a memorial at Techport Arena. Doors will open at 2 p.m. The memorial will begin at 3 p.m. His family has also set up a memorial website for him where fans can share their favorite memory of Russell. You can find that link on ksat.com. Today is the day we set aside to honor and remember the nearly 19 million veterans who serve our country. Each one with a story behind their service. KSAT's Camelia Juarez asked how veterans would like us to honor their sacrifice. The Texas Children's Choir singing for retired and active veterans gathered at Fort Sam Houston Cemetery. It was an extra special day for several heroes who finally became citizens for the country they've been serving. Ushi Yan from China is one of them. She says the army opened up so many doors for her and her family. I'm waiting for this day like for eight years already. Yeah, but army helped me so much. <laughs> The Buffalo Soldiers held a ceremony at the San Antonio National Cemetery. Colonel Brian Logan says volunteering to help a veteran can go a long way. 
get involved with the local community. There's plenty of programs out there to help our veterans, especially during transition. Retired Army Lieutenant Jason Mims was working the election polls earlier this week. He says the best way to honor a veteran is to do your civic duty. Just watch other people thank veterans for their service by exercising their right to vote. There is a way to honor our veterans who have passed away. If they're buried at a national cemetery, you can leave comments about that person at the Veterans Legacy Memorial website. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Veterans Day celebrations are continuing, though, tomorrow. The city is again hosting a veterans parade in downtown after a two-year hiatus because of the pandemic. The parade starts at noon tomorrow near 4th Street and Alamo Street. It's going to end at San Saba Street. Also happening tomorrow in downtown, a huge veterans fair at Hemisphere Park. It's a case at community event. Things kick off with the charity run at 8 in the morning. There'll be music, food, vendors, and much more. It's free and open to the public. We have the details on our website. Just click on the KSAT community section. We want to take a look outside on this Friday afternoon. And yes, traffic moving along just fine here at I-10 at Crossroads. Hope everyone gets home safely for the rest of the Veterans Day weekend. Still to come, people living with long COVID forced to be their own advocate when they seek treatment for their symptoms. Find out how the CDC is stepping in now to help them and doctors get on the same page when it comes to making a diagnosis. Coming up at 6 o'clock, neighbors react today to an illegal gambling operation that was hiding in plain sight. RJ Marquez stopped by the Woodlawn Lake neighborhood that was the site of an eight-liner raid that led to dozens of people in handcuffs. Veterans Day this year has added significance for two San Antonio men. They were strangers until the contents of a mysterious blue plastic container brought them together. Inside was memorabilia belonging to a Korean War veteran. Our Jesse de Goyado has that story at six. Looking forward to that one. All right, we're learning more about what's called long COVID now. That's where patients reporting debilitating symptoms lasting for weeks, even months. Big money is being spent on research on this. And some patients say, though, it's still hard to convince doctors that these symptoms are real. 12 Your Size Marilyn Morris takes a look at how to deal with long COVID. For years, Louise Salon had her asthma and acid reflux under control until she got COVID in March of 2020. I could never get a full breath. I thought for sure I was going to die. The fatigue was debilitating. Her inhaler barely worked. COVID aggravated a condition related to her acid reflux so badly, she had to have surgery to save her life. But her problems persisted. More than two years later, Louise is like tens of millions of people affected by long COVID. There's no test for it, but the CDC now recognizes it as an emerging condition and has released guidance for doctors. Tell your doctor about your symptoms like fatigue, brain fog, breathing issues, or stomach troubles. They may also refer you to a specialist. For example, if you have heart palpitations, they may suggest a cardiologist. Also, look for a long COVID clinic, as well as support groups like Survivor Corps, Body Politic, and Long COVID Alliance. If your daily activities are substantially limited, you could try applying for disability benefits, which may offer some protections, like job leave. Be sure your doctor knows the diagnostic code for long COVID, U09.9. That way, insurance may be more likely to cover it. As for Louise, her quality of life has improved. She can resume normal activity on a given day, but has to recover in bed the next. I made it through, and I'm improving. I'm grateful to be alive. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Just in time for Thanksgiving, need to get some things out of the house to make room for incoming guests. The city's solid waste management hosting a free landfill day for San Antonio customers happening tomorrow at two different locations. You can drop off your items at the Republic Services landfill off I-10 just past North Foster Road or at the waste management landfill on Coval Road. That's on the southwest side near Lackland. If you're going to need to show a valid picture ID, bring a copy of your most recent CPS energy bill. For a list of acceptable items to drop off, just check out KSAT.com. 
If you've traveled across Texas, then you know firsthand how important those rest areas are. Well, some students at a local school are taking an active role in making sure that monarch butterflies have a rest area too as they travel through Texas. Students at Fenwick Academy spent today working on their monarch garden. The school is working with the National Wildlife Federation's Monarch Heroes program, creating it on the school's campus through a 1500 dollar grant students are learning about the butterflies and what pollinators are needed in order to survive their annual migration the monarch butterflies travel and they um they migrate every year along the i-35 route and because there's not a lot of vegetation on the route they the population has been slowly declining they don't have places to eat or lay eggs so the population can grow the students here are hoping the new garden is going to be a popular place for those butterflies to recharge. The Academy's program coordinator is also hoping that the campus is awarded another grant next year so they can maintain this garden and continue to build on their Monarch project. A butterfly stop. I like that. I like it. And you know, a lot of times these butterflies use the wind to whisk them along. Boy, did they not, get a push, yeah, did they get a push this <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, you couldn't fight the wind if you were a butterfly this no, afternoon. You had to go Just with it. Let it carry you. Yep. <laughs> and it's taking you south, right? That's the thing about it. And we do have some activity on the radar screen, so I want to get to that right away. Still a little bit of shower activity, not as much as what we saw today, especially uh, during about the one o'clock hour, but still a few spritzes and sprinkles and light showers, even some moderate rain as you get farther south down I-35 around Pearsall, Dilly area. That's where we have some light to moderate rain. This is going to be very short lived. It's not going to hang around for very long. Wilson County, parts of Carnes County, some Moderate showers have popped up, but they're highly isolated, and I really don't anticipate any of this to get in the way of outdoor evening plans tonight mainly high school football. I, we could have a brief sprinkle, but that would be it. Not expecting any lightning associated with this action around San Antonio, west side of town. You see near Sea World, especially at Warren High School. We've got this one little shower that's left over. It's weakening really quickly as it heads toward Ingram Park Mall, Holmes High School and even Leon Valley. That's starting to fall apart. You notice on the far north side of town, this is just south of 1604 and east of 281. Uh, this is where we have one downpour right here, just off of Bulverde Road, south of 1604. This is headed off to the east, and it should make it uh, to Live Oak by about 5.33 p.m. Garden Ridge at 5.41 and Comal at about 5.55. Now, that would be, of course, if it actually survives that trek, but that's when you could expect it uh, in those areas. You go north of town, just a few sprinkles. Mainly, we're looking at cold and wind. Take a look at our morning low temperature trend. Tomorrow morning in San Antonio, I think we'll dip down into the upper 30s, about 39 degrees. Sunday, 36 in the morning, and I do anticipate a light freeze in parts of the hill country on Sunday morning. It wouldn't surprise me if we had pockets of a light freeze in the hill country even tomorrow morning. So really the next couple of mornings we could see some areas of the hill country getting a light freeze. Look at the current readings out there. See where the cold front is. Check out Laredo and Corpus Christi 81, Brownsville 82. We were in those shoes at 12:45 p.m. 82 degrees. Now we're down to 54. Hello cold front. The season changed like that today. It went from spring to fall and it's going to feel like winter, to be honest with you, over the next few nights and early mornings. Uh, right now, Holotus is at 50, burning down to 46, Canyon Lake 51, still 63 in Pleasanton. That's going to be changing quickly. Here's what we're expecting for tomorrow morning. 41 in Converse, Poteet and Pleasanton, 36 in Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort, 33 degrees. So it wouldn't shock me if we did have a few nooks and crannies out there in the hill country where we had a brief light freeze tomorrow morning, and then it's going to be even a few degrees cooler Sunday morning. So keep that in mind. Tomorrow afternoon, right around 60 degrees, uh, not 82 locally, right around 60 degrees. We'll be close to 60 basically the next few days, and this cool air is going to stick around. I mean, your high temperature trend, 60 plus or minus a few. As warm as 63 on Monday, as cool as 56 for the high temperature on Wednesday. And of course, we're dealing with that wind. Look at the latest gust at the airport, 35 miles per hour. Hondo gusting to 31. We're going to continue to see these gusts through the evening and into the nighttime hours. It'll pump the brakes a little bit overnight, but overall, it's going to be a blustery night. Uh, latest 
gusts in Del Rio up to 28 miles per hour. So we're feeling that wind and the cold. 39 tomorrow morning, north wind at 10 to 20, still pretty windy tomorrow. 54 at noon, 60 degrees the high temperature, a lot of sunshine throughout the day. Sunday, there's that chilly morning. Light freeze, I think, is uh, very, very probable in a good chunk of the hill country. And then one more chance of rain, and that's on Monday. A little system moving through, cloudy, but some scattered light rain is what we're expecting, especially along and east of I-35. Definitely going to need some layers tonight. You're going to need a coat. Greg Simmons is proving that. Yes, he is. Greg was already looking forward to this weather so much. He got the coat, he got the coat out of the closet. Yes. He is definitely ready for tonight. Yep. Greg, and we're doing something special tonight and here at KSAT. Actually, yeah, because we're actually carrying this game. It's a playoff game, and on a Friday night between Reagan and New Braunfels, we've had to seek shelter under the overhang here because we do have a rain shower out here near the airport at Comalander Stadium. When we come back, a preview of tonight's game between Reagan and New Braunfels. And now, both teams will be playing without their starting quarterbacks. We'll explain why when we come back. And the Spurs get ready to host the Milwaukee Bucks coming up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to a wet and chilly Comalander Stadium for the big game in our big game coverage tonight. Number six, Reagan, playing host to number 10, New Bravos, in the Class 6A Division I by district playoffs. And both teams will be playing without their starting quarterbacks. For the New Bravos Unicorns, their starting quarterback, Leighton Adams, is being treated at a local hospital after suffering injuries in an unfortunate accident last night in New Bravos. They will go with backup Clayton Namkin, a sophomore who's appeared in four games this season. And as a health precaution, the Reagan Rattlers are holding out their starting quarterback, Caleb Capuccio, a sophomore, and go with backup Jacob Atkins, a senior who started the season as their starting quarterback. That means both teams will rely heavily on their star running backs on offense. Cole Pryor for the Rattlers, who's over 1,200 yards rushing and 10 touchdowns. And Tyree Johnson for the Unicorns, who has combined 990 yards and 10 touchdowns as well. Pretty good team, honestly. They, they, have, they have some dudes that um, just all around pretty good team. It's going to be a dogfight. Definitely a more mature football team on both ends of the ball, watching film uh, after our first scrimmage early on, uh, first week actually, and I think we're both going to come out, have a good fight, uh, starts in the trenches with us, and it uh, will be a good game. All right, we'll be, this game will be right here at Comalander Stadium, live on KSAT 12, starting with our pregame show at 6.30. Laredo Alexander taking on Brennan and Gus, Cedar Park and Smith Valley Ranger, Curve Time and Alamo Heights at Orem, Georgetown and Braunfels Canyon to Cougars, San Marcos, Brandeis at Ferris, Lamp Passes and Somerset at Alamo, Alamo Dome, that is. Lockhart and Burbank will be at Alamo Stadium. Harlandale will be at Veterans Memorial Rutledge, Uvalde and Canyon Lake at Edgewood Veterans, Davenport at Fredericksburg, George West at Polk, Hondo and Randolph and Marion and Comfort and Taff will be at Matador. Our big game coverage road trip has Larry and photographer Billy Caldera headed south tonight. Their first stop at Southside High School where the Cardinals host Victoria East in the first round of the postseason. Then it's off to catch Southwest, the Dragons hosting Victoria West. And don't forget our San Antonio Spurs play tonight, 7 o'clock. It looks like Giannis Antetokounmpo and Drew Holiday will be out with a left knee soreness and sprained right angle for tonight's game against the Spurs. And don't forget to join us on our BGC.com for all the latest score updates tonight. And then on the night beat for all the highlights and final scores. And don't forget the big game right here live on KSAT 12, starting with our pregame show at 630. Live from Comalander Stadium, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports, back after this. Thank you so much for watching the News at 5. World News up next. See you back here at 6.